Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Katamari Forever. My name is Dylan, I am your host, and today we're talking minigames. First we have the Katamari Forever minigame from the end credits of this game. You unlock this by completing every stage in the game. And if, in case you missed it, I played this game last time in episode 33, so go check it out there if you haven't already. Next we have the beautiful Katamari minigame, which has both a normal and a hard variation, both of which you unlock by completing every stage in the game in drive mode. Lastly, we have the We Love Katamari minigame. You unlock this one by completing every stage in the game in every mode. So, Forever, Classic, Drive, and Eternal mode. And that's a lot of labor to unlock this one minigame, which would be really disappointing, except that it has really great music. But anyway, we'll be getting to that in a bit. I'm going to start out by playing the beautiful Katamari minigame on normal mode. So let's get started here. The beautiful Katamari minigame is a hybrid of traditional Katamari gameplay with sort of an arcade-style top-down shooter. So you roll around objects as usual, but you can press X to shoot them, and shooting objects breaks them up into smaller parts, like this child here, which becomes two children, and this child here, which becomes 16 if we aim properly. Each, uh, each of his four parts break off into four even smaller parts. So the strategy here is if an object is smaller than you, roll it up. If it's larger than you, throw something at it until it's smaller than you, and then roll it up. So as we go along, we're going to be getting progressively larger, allowing us to get more and more things. Basic strategy is that you want to always be netting objects. So like even though you're spending objects to break things up, you're ideally going to be getting more objects out of it than you're using to do the breaking up. Thing is, some objects, like this car here, this hatchback, have, uh, well, they require multiple shots in order to break them up. So you're going to be expending almost as many objects sometimes as you're actually collecting in the process. But ideally, the objects you're rolling up are larger than the ones that you're spending to do the breaking up. And, uh... This minigame in the normal difficulty is not terribly difficult. The, uh, the main way that you're going to lose this game is by having something push you off the bottom of the screen. And that usually happens because you're smaller than you should be for where you are. Or maybe you're just, you know, you, you lag behind and get caught behind a building or something. This uh, building that I just broke up there is um, traditionally where you'll die in this game if you have not been shooting. The first time you play this minigame, you might not realize that you can press X to shoot, and if that's the case, you'll uh, you'll get caught on that building there and get pushed off the bottom of the screen, and you cannot progress any further. It might actually happen to you earlier than that, um, but uh, I think the building is as far as you can possibly get without shooting. And as you can now see, we've moved beyond the confines of the earth and into the sky. 180 seconds remaining as we uh, swim through these clouds here, getting higher and higher roughly 10 meters in size. And as you may have noticed, all of the cousins that uh, appeared in Beautiful Katamari also appear on this stage. Some of them rolling around Katamaris of their own, which uh, you can actually break out and roll up into your Katamari, which I'm going to do here. Katamaris tend to be a pretty good size object, so they're ones I tend to try to get. Now, once we move on and play the hard version of this minigame, everything on this stage, well, a number of the things on this stage are going to become hostile to us, and they're going to be shooting back. And the cousins in particular are traditionally the most dangerous things. Oh, and you can see the King of All Cosmos in the background there. Um, you can't actually roll him up because he is in the background, but we will be encountering him again a little bit later on when he'll actually be on the same plane as us. But yeah, as I was saying, we'll be getting to hard pretty soon, and uh, then things are going to be shooting back, and it's going to be significantly more difficult. I would not actually say that this is an easy minigame. Uh, I, I expect most people would not complete it their first time through. I certainly didn't. It took me several tries before I was able to uh, complete it here. Basically, I, I needed to get over my uh, resistance to shoot things. Um, I, I did not want to uh, lose objects, because the game trains you to want to keep every object you roll in your Katamari in your Katamari, so the idea of ejecting something is, uh, is horrifying. You would never want that to happen. But um, the more I played this game, I realized that generally you can just shoot as much as you want, as long as you're uh, actually aiming properly and you're hitting things with those shots, it's going to be worth it, because even objects that take... Um, 
a bunch of shots to break up are probably going to break up into either a bunch of objects or very, very large objects. Okay, that part there with the uh, the two huge daikons and the katamari, that's a very common place to lose, as is that katamari right there, which is pretty fast. Like, this, this whole stretch that I'm in right now is one of the more dangerous parts, and we are nearing the end, as you can see, uh, 54 seconds remaining. Now, uh, you move faster if your katamari is larger, so the amount of time that it takes to complete this uh, this mini game is not constant. Like it, it appears to be an auto scroller, but uh, the way you play does have an effect on the speed of the stage. And here's the King of All Cosmos. Got to shoot him a bunch of times to break him up. And if I wasn't large enough, those four pieces he broke off into would have been enough to push me off the bottom of the screen and kill me. And so here we reach the very end. We see uh, three planets, one for the prince in the top left, one for the queen here in the middle, and one for the princess in the top right. Now, uh, you can actually get this tree over here on the princess is a uh, planet, but the main thing you want to collect here are these uh, fireworks of objects, which uh, the queen releases every seven seconds. So the earlier you get to this stage in the game, the larger your score can be by collecting those fireworks bursts. I've actually managed to get to this point with uh, over 50 seconds remaining, so it's possible to do a lot better than I just did there, but all things considered, that wasn't too bad. I managed to complete this stage, which is more than I'll be able to say next time when I do the hard mode, because that one's a little bit harder. I've actually never completed it, so let's see how I do. Okay, beautiful Katamari, hard type, let's go. So the first thing you want to do in both normal and hard type is collect all of these fruits at the beginning, which means that it's best, if possible, to already be holding down when the game starts. Alright, so as you may have noticed, the layout of objects is exactly the same between normal and hard mode. The only thing that's changed is that enemies shoot you. And as you can see, that, uh, that schoolboy on the right was the first object to do so. And sh being shot is terrible. You'll lose a ton of objects and a ton of size every time you get shot, so if it happens to you more than a few times, you're not going to be able to complete the stage. It's, it's just awful. Like, um, eventually you're going to reach a point, like you're not going to die instantly once you're shot, you're just going to lose objects, but you're going to get to a point where you're smaller than you need to be to progress, and you're just going to get pushed off by objects that you would be able to roll up otherwise. Also, you may have noticed that, um, the game zooms out as you become larger, like, uh, like it does in all forms of Katamari Damashi. Um, if you're too small, for a certain area, the screen will not be as zoomed out as it should be, and so objects that are to the left and the right of the path you won't be able to collect at all, which is going to make it even harder harder to recover from uh, being too small. Ah, I got shot by Harvest there. I'm normally able to destroy that tree far enough in advance that Harvest won't be able to shoot me, but she managed to do so there. Let's get this car here. Yeah, so right now I'm, I'm smaller than I'd like to be. I've gotten shot a couple of times already, which is not good at all. But it's still early, plenty of time to recover. Uh, I'm not sure why I shot that building there, I didn't actually need to do that. Ah, this robot! I always forget about that robot, and he's like the most dangerous enemy uh, up until the King of All Cosmos. Okay, but alright, I managed to recover, and I'm actually doing pretty well going to the Sky segment. Actually, I take that back, I'm only 6 meters. I like to be closer to 8 meters when I'm going to the Sky. But I did manage to pick up some ground pieces and uh, those buildings and things before I lift it off, so it could be a lot worse. I'm actually not doing too terrible altogether. But, um, yeah, it's it's not like I, uh, I feel that I had a very good chance of completing this minigame in either case, because uh, I've never managed to complete it. Ah, that airplane. See, the cousins are obvious. Like, I see a cousin and I know I should generally look out for it, but I never expect the, the robots and the airplanes and there's a UFO coming up soon. I always fail to recognize those at first glance as enemies. And, uh, oh, is this this fat one here? Is that Marnie? Yeah, Marnie. Uh, I always get shot by Marnie. And then this UFO. Ah, this is going terribly. <laughs> I just lost a cousin there. I'm losing objects left and right. Okay. Um, I love these falling rocks because um, they explode exactly like asteroids from the game Asteroids. Um, <laughs> I think, well, th this whole game mode is kind of inspired by Asteroids, but, um, uh, well, uh, along with, like, uh, auto-scrolling top-down shooters, obviously. But uh, the, the breaking up of objects is very Asteroids inspired, and since every object has sort of its own pattern for how it explodes. It's nice that the asteroids explode in such a traditionally asteroids fashion. Let's grab Miso there. <laughs> Miso, my favorite cousin. And you may have seen that um, 
the high score tables for each of these mini games were very, very miso dominated. Uh, the only non miso score was uh, one from the princess, which I kept around because uh, that was my high score from the very first time I finished this game. Yeah, we're actually playing on uh, my original file here and not the uh, the game file I've been using for the Let's Play up until this point because I wasn't going to uh, go and complete every stage in every game mode just in order to be able to show off these mini games when I already had a file that was more than capable of doing that. Um, Alright, I've managed to survive pretty far, but we're entering the most dangerous phase, so I've got to stay on guard here, because there are going to be some fast-moving Katamaris, and I'm also not as zoomed out as I would like to be. I think I can I can be one more stage zoomed out than I am right now. Ah, the Daikon! Okay. <laughs> Still alive, that's good. Um, yeah, so I've gotten in this minigame to the King of All Cosmos at the end twice uh, in hard mode, but both times... No, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, both times that I did so, I was I, I managed to blow up the King of All Cosmos, but then one of the smaller Kings of All Cosmos that came out of him pushed me off the bottom. They're really big and they're really fast, and it's coming up soon. Uh, we have some food plates coming up. Well, first pumpkins. Yeah, pumpkins come next, and then there are some food plates, and then the, uh, the prince and the king come next after that, I think. Oh, and yeah, this soccer ball's with the food plates. So yeah, here's a... Oh, this isn't the prince's katamari? Okay, in normal mode, that's the prince's katamari. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, if you're playing as the prince, that's the prince's katamari. But since I'm playing as the prince, he's replaced by an angel. And oh, I lost in the same place I always do. Yeah, delayed reaction, I know, but I was talking. Uh, uh... <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool to know. An angel replaces whatever cousin you're playing as. Um, I was kind of surprised to find Miso playing this time. And uh, now that I remember, uh, yeah, I'm used to there being an angel in that place. But um, all right, let's try this again. See if I can get past the King of All Cosmos. Okay, I feel like I'm doing pretty well at this stage. Um, here's Miso. <laughs> um, yeah, so the thing about this game is that um, it's harder than the normal mode. Even if there are no projectiles on the screen, because if you've ever been hit by any enemy shots at all, you're smaller than you would be if you were playing on normal mode. So, ah, these chess pieces. These chess pieces, they're so relentless. Like, once the chess pieces start shooting, they don't stop until you destroy them. So they create just, like, these walls of, of shots that you have to deal with. Oh no, I can't get these buildings? I'm supposed to be able to get these buildings at this point. That bodes kind of poorly for me. Um, alright, let's dodge some cousins here. Dodge these, these shots here. Okay. <laughs> um, it's nice to, uh, to have that brief moment there where there are no, um, other objects on the screen, so you can actually identify where the enemy projectiles are and avoid them. Ooh, did I- okay, <laughs> I managed to survive. Uh, normally, the- oh, no, 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 no. The, the little shots, like, they're brightly colored and they're flashing and all, but they can still be difficult to see, uh, when the screen is crowded with objects. And, like, it's really distressing seeing your uh, Katamari start flashing red because it's so bad for you when it happens. And like the red flash lasts longer than I feel like it should. So I always like see it flashing and then I like look away and then look back and it's still flashing red and sometimes I'll think that I've been shot uh, more times than I actually have been and I'll panic. Okay, I'm gonna go right down the middle here. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's the strategy. If you go right down the middle, the, the four kings that break off of the main king can't hit you. I managed to take, or I, I had to take a lot of hits, rather, from the, uh, the, the prince doppelganger, that angel. But that's okay, because I managed to make it to the end um, with a pretty bad score because of all that damage I took at the end. Uh, just right at 108 meters. Let's, uh, let's get as many of these fireworks things as I can, though. Try to up that score a little bit. But uh, yeah, I managed to make it to the end, if nothing else. And there should be one more firework burst. I can't even get the princess's tree. Oh, this is terrible. Okay. Uh, I wonder if I'm going to... I think I've gotten a better score than this, haven't I? Like, this isn't my best score in this mode, despite the fact that I completed it. Is it? <laughs> yeah, the, the king says that it's a below average Katamari, which I certainly agree with. Um, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, that's the 133 meter Katamari I just made. The one I made last time where I died to the King Ball Cosmos was 163 meters. So you can actually complete this game and still have a worse score than if you died on the final boss. Just because like going down the middle the way I did, I took so many hits right at the end. But um, all right, well, in any case, I got to show off the ending. So uh, let's move on and finish things off with the We Love Katamari minigame, which is uh, a lot easier than both of the beautiful Katamari minigames. Alright, here we are, We Love Katamari minigame, pressing the start button now. 
So this minigame starts out really uneventful. There's nothing to do for the first minute or so, except uh, just chill and listen to the Robo King here uh, introduce himself. And this would not have been a problem in the original game because there would be credits scrolling as well, so that there, there would be something going on during this time. I can, however, control the prince or um, whichever cousin I happen to be playing. If I go up here, I can fly around. <laughs> Uh, flying physics are exactly like walking physics, though. It's just a difference in animation. Uh, this castle is basically two-dimensional. <laughs> uh, I can I can walk behind it here and then just barely go down and be in front of it. That's kind of cool. Yep, so the Robo King is warning us not to let ourselves get rolled up, but I wonder what he could be talking about. Everything looks perfectly peaceful here. Nothing that could possibly roll me up, right? Except... There it is, there it is. <laughs> There's the sun. So, this sun is going to be following me around, and if I touch it, it's game over. Also, if I run into those shooting stars, I can deflect them, but that doesn't do anything. Um, as you can see, my score is still at zero. I wonder what I could possibly do to increase my score. Oh, hey there. Here's a, a cousin and someone else down here, and oh, oh no! They got rolled up by the sun, and my score is improving. So the goal here is to um, avoid getting rolled up, and all the while getting everyone else possible rolled up. And so the sun is going to follow me around, so I want to get close, as close as possible to other people so that they get rolled up without getting rolled up myself, because the prince is just inherently faster than everyone else, I guess. Yeah, so I'm going to um, run up to them, warn them of the impending danger, and then outrun them. <laughs> Which, this whole thing seems so cruel, but you've got to remember that everyone loves getting rolled up in the Katamari. If that wasn't the case, these games would be horrifying. But, uh, but they're not. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And, and just listen to this music. This, this part coming up for here, I've got to be quiet for this. Just, just listen, it's wonderful. Yeah, okay, so when the when a Katamari disappears, that means th there's a quick roll coming. And there we can see that um, the sun was actually Katamari being rolled around by the king of all cosmos. And now that he's revealed himself, he's going to be moving around, not just vertically, but also horizontally. So he's able to move anywhere on the screen following me around, so I'm in a much higher danger of getting rolled up. And um, he does do this quick roll uh, no, 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 two more times, and also if you're not careful, you can get, get caught in the corner, like I almost did there. So this place that we're rolling around is the hub world from um, Mina Daisuke Katamari Damashi. Um, we love Katamari. And um, all of these non-cousin characters, these like NPCs, like that cow bear farmer there. Who, who is a cow bear farmer? Who could possibly have that profession? Um, all of these people were, um, you talk to them to go to the various stages in the game. And uh, so this would be at the very end. After uh, rolling around on every, every stage, completing all of these people's requests, you would then all, you, you would turn your back on all of them and then roll them all up into the Katamari. And um, between the cousins and the others, there are a total of 70 people to roll up here. Oh, no, 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 we gotta get the kid, the kid! He got away, he got away, we missed one! Alright, so 69 now that I can possibly roll up. Oop, quick roll, get out of the way, get out of the way. No, yes, okay, I managed to survive. Oh, no, there's someone else, there's someone else getting away. King, come back. Uh, I've missed two already. Alright, so I'm not gonna get a perfect score here. But, no matter, I'm going to probably finish it anyway, since we're coming up on the end here. And oh yeah, the whole Hoshino family is here. Um, uh, yeah, and this is the last guy here, this Dr. Katamari. Yeah, so only 67. Oh, and that quick roll is a fake out. He never actually does it. And uh, I'm out of control now, so I'm just going to watch how things play out from here. My final score is going to be 67. Well, actually 68 coming up here. So yeah, I only missed those two. The only thing that changes depending on whether you're, depending on your final score is uh, what's said. There's a, a message coming up and it's different depending on whether you get all 70, whether you finish the stage like I just did without getting all 70, or uh, whether you get rolled up. There's a different message for each. Oh, hon, I can't say I'm thrilled. It's not nice. Make sure you roll everyone up next time, okay? 
yeah, so the, the queen wants us to roll everyone up in the Katamari. I'm not sure why she's so judgmental all of a sudden. She's never cared about our Katamaris in the past. She's always left that to uh, the king. But in any case, that's all of the mini games in Katamari Forever. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.